Hi, I know you're normally used to hearing from Andrew or Will, but now it's my turn. I'm Paul, I work behind the scenes here at GSM Arena, as I've got a face for radio, if you catch my drift. We thought we'd try something different. The guys in the office have been talking about drones recently, and with the launch of the Mavic Air from DJI, I thought I'd take the plunge. So here are my first impressions and thoughts on the DJI Mavic Air from this rookie's perspective. You immediately notice how well designed and built the Mavic Air is. There is an elegant robustness about it that is reinforced when you unfold in the arms. Nothing squeaks and everything feels tight and well engineered. The camera system and gimbal is nestled within the body, which looks like it will offer some protection from knocks and crashes. You can also control the Mavic Air with your phone directly without having to use the controller. Whilst this offers a reduced range, it's great for spur of the moment quick shots. While we're talking about the camera, let's throw in some specs. It's a 12 megapixel sensor capable of capturing video up to 4K at 30 frames a second. It also promises excellent quality as it records at 100 megabits per second. The camera is mounted on a three axis gimbal, which when combined with the dampeners should provide rock solid shots. The battery is held firmly in place by two strong spring loaded locking sliders, which ensures the battery stays put in flight. To remove the battery, you have to unfold all the arms, which makes it slightly inconvenient. When folded, I could just about cover the Mavic Air with my iPhone 8 Plus. It's that small. For this rookie, it seems to strike just the right balance between size and weight, while being functional enough to be more than a toy, but light enough to ensure that I'd want to take it with me on my travels. So far, so good. I'd also heard that there was a simulator I could use for practice. This is found within the Academy section of the DJI app. In order to use it though, you also need the drone and remote control powered up. All that done, I found it useful in getting comfortable with the controls, at no risk of crashing. I'm glad I used the simulator, as it turned out there were firmware upgrades for everything. The drone, the remote, and even each battery. This took 30 minutes updating the firmware, which wasn't too much of a problem as I was connected to Wi-Fi. However, if I'd been outside, this would have been even slower over 4 or 3G. Having plugged everything into charge overnight, I was eager to fly, and so headed on out. Like the best Transformer robot, you prepare the Mavic Air for flight by folding out the four arms, starting with the rears, which first fold down and then outwards, while the fronts simply pivot outwards towards you. Felt a little odd at first, but soon it became second nature. Pop off the camera gimbal protector and we're good to go. The remote is extremely portable and pulls the same Transformers trick. Fold out the antenna, fold out the grips which hold your mobile. In a nice touch, this also exposes the joysticks to screw into the controller something less to snag on when it's in your pocket or bag, and insert your phone. At this point, I'll mention that I'm not a huge fan of this arrangement when using a large phone like my 8 Plus. It just seems that it's going to fall out. That being said, it never did though. So, let's fly. Taking it easy, I was keen to see how sensitive the controls were. I can't believe how stable this is. I've seen drones fly before, but nonetheless, it's different when you're in control. Like my wife, the Mavic Air has eyes at the back of its head. Additionally, it has two facing down, with another two facing forwards, with their purpose in life to provide collision avoidance capabilities. Additionally, these sensors provide a secondary optical compass. Its sides are sensorless though, so you have to be careful with those sideways movements. While flying the aircraft with the sticks is fun, it's kind of missing the point. To get those professional results, the Mavic Air comes with a number of different flying modes, not too dissimilar to the Mavic Pro. The mode which I wanted to check out was Active Track. Once you've identified and selected a target, the Mavic Air follows it relentlessly, Terminator style. Let's bust out some quick shots. Selecting quick shots gives you access to the rocket, droney, circle, helix, asteroid and boomerang modes, with the latter two being new to the Mavic Air. You select your mode, select your target and fire, or should I say go. The Mavic Air does the rest, creating amazingly professional shots following its predefined flight path around your target using the quick shot mode you selected. At this point, I was joined by the other guys with their drones, giving us the holy trinity of the DJI Spark, Mavic Air, and Mavic Pro. So how do they compare? Well, there's no major difference in build quality. Being small and lighter, the Spark also has the smallest battery, giving it a maximum flight time of 16 minutes, while the Pro 
having the biggest battery achieves a 27 minute maximum flight time. The Air falls right in the middle of the two, with a maximum flight time of 21 minutes. Due to its folding design, the Air is actually smaller than the Spark when packed, which is great. The controllers are all comparable in size. The S controller sticks are removable and store inside the controller for transport. The Pro has the only controller that has a built-in display. Of course, often aside, my main reason for buying this was for aerial filming and photography. So how did it perform in that respect? Now that I've been joined by the other guys, we headed out to shoot some comparison footage. All the footage you're seeing here uses the default settings with no profiles applied. At some point in the future, I'll invest more time in delving into the image settings to find the perfect configuration. First, we compared the highest possible resolution and bitrate that we can capture with all three drones. At first glance, the Spark is the softest one due to having a maximum resolution of 1080p, as opposed to the 4K resolution of the Air and the Pro. The Pro looks to be slightly sharper, with the Air having a richer and warmer image. Next, let's speed up the footage. This helps us compare stability from their gimbals. Given the conditions, they're all pretty damn stable, but a slight advantage has to go to the Pro in this particular example. Now let's look at the four different resolutions from the Mavic Air only. The Mavic Air has a wide range of video recording options when it comes to resolution and frames per second. First, let's compare the 4K and 2.7K resolutions at 30 frames a second. Here, it will come as no surprise that the 4K provides the sharpest picture, but it's negligible when compared to the upscale 2.7K footage. And if you want to save some space on your memory card, I have no problem recommending this setting. Now, let's look at the 2.7K footage at 60 frames a second. At this setting, you start to lose some of the fine detail, especially when you look at the foliage in particular. And finishing off with the 1080p at 120 frames a second, you lose too much detail and it lacks the sharpness of the other resolutions. So yes, I did crash it. Attempting an indoor hover, the inevitable happened. Wall meet aircraft, aircraft meet wall. The only damage, however, was to one propeller tip. With everything being an opportunity, let me show you how quick and easy it is to remove and replace propeller. Press down and twist to remove the broken prop. Make sure the replacement prop has the same markings as the damaged one. Press down, and again, we're flight capable. So, from a rookie's perspective, what did I think of the Mavic Air? For me, at this price, it's the perfect drone, and it's compact and light enough when folded to take almost anywhere. And with its huge array of shooting modes, you can quickly and easily take great shots and footage. And with that captured footage being more than good enough for my needs. Any problems? Just a few. I'm still not 100% happy with the remote having to grip my large phone. And it's still a slight annoyance having to unfold the arms to change the battery. But those small niggles aside, if you want a great first time drone that captures 4K footage, I have no problem in recommending the Mavic Air. Make sure you subscribe below so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Bye for now. <laughs> this is going to take far too long, isn't it? <laughs>